Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a Guilds of Ravnica pre-release opening. I chose Golgari because if you are a fan of the channel, you know that Golgari is by far my absolute favorite color combination. I like the combination of black at cost with the uh, payoffs of resources, like the the ramp ability or just that the creatures have value from green. So they both meld together in Golgari to make kind of a graveyard value based strategy. And there's a lot of synergies used with the Gol Golgari. I actually like, I chose Golgari way before Assassin's Trophy was uh, spoiled, but even with now Assassin's Trophy, it's also probably your best EV is to go Golgari. So cool little deck boxes this time. They look awesome. Too bad they're so flimsy. And let's see if we got Assassin's Trophy. All right, so the dice are really cool on here too. You can see these actually have the set symbols. Apologize for my dirty hands. I, that's pretty gross here. I probably should have washed my hands before we did this. Uh, been moving boxes and stuff, but that's a pretty cool dice as well. So let's rub our hands sort of clean. It's not gonna mark off on the cards, it's, it's not. Oh, look at that, look at that. Boom, money, 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 money. You saw it was sealed. I didn't, I didn't, uh, um do this i didn't i didn't i didn't uh see this i didn't I, what's the word i'm looking for assassin's trophy foil that just paid for everything boom beautiful card the chase card zach is jealous he opened up some garbage card uh that's what you get for choosing is it zach uh but nonetheless the assassin's trophy and he's throwing me perfect fits to get that perfect fit immediately because of course zach doesn't like my disgustingly dirty hands all right let's open this up Okay, so we have the Assassin's Trophy, which is not nearly as good in Limited as it is in Constructed. In fact, sometimes Assassin's Trophy is pretty bad. In, I don't know. I don't think there's a scenario. You definitely should not use it if it is bad. So you're going to be wanting to use the Assassin's Trophy to get rid of a bomb, and that's it. Or probably late game where ramping your opponent doesn't matter. But don't just use an Assassin's Trophy on a 3 or a 4 or a 2 drop when it is not a threat. This is something that is just not a pure removal spell uh, like murder use it wisely beautiful card uh, the card conditioning on these foils is good it doesn't look warped it looks absolutely pristine so kudos to wizards there as you can see the uh, yeah you can just absolutely see that this is a great card uh, hopefully it doesn't warp in a, a I'll give you an update but we're gonna throw this in a perfect fit I'll put it in the as so see. Zach wants to put it in the freezer or the fridge to see if it warps, which it, of course, will. So we got this Assassin's Trophy now in the perfect fit. And the card quality seems a little bit snappy. Like, these are pretty good. You can hear that. Seems a little bit more flimsy, like Zach and I was talking about. But sometimes these first... Uh, this is the good printer that they use. And the card stock's usually pretty decent on them. So, uh, big shout out there. All right, so we have the Golgari Locket. Everyone will have a locket. And we have the status to stat, uh, st to statue. Uh, destroy an artifact creature or enchantment. Very good removal spell. Uh, or a target creature is plus one or death touch, which is also like a better removal spell in certain instances. Uh, it can be a two for one. This is a solid card in limited, especially sealed. This is a card you're going to want. You're absolutely going to want to pick these up highly. So I'm glad I got it. The Crawl Swarm. A 4-1 flying discard a creature card. Return Crawl Swarm from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, very good because it's always a 4-1 with flying, so then you can pitch cards that are not as good. I'm not sure it, meet, it meets the curve requirements. A 5-drop is usually needs to be a, a very uh, dominant threat. But the 4 power on a is, is might be pretty good. We'll have to wait and see. I think that 1 toughness is going to be a big check in this format because there's a lot of ways to kill 1 toughness creatures. This is, however, a creature that can come back. All right, we have the 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 Okrin Assassin. A 1-1 one, one death touch, all creatures able to block it, must do so. Wow, this is a combo that we all used to back in the in Lore and Venom. Remember back in that day when we tried to do Lore and Venom? Now all we do, need to do with this card is try to give it indestructible, but this is pretty crazy in a board state stall. Crushing Canopy, I think this is a reprint, right? Destroy a creature with flying or destroy an enchantment. Great sideboard card, awesome sideboard card. And sealed is best two out of three, so keep that in mind. We have the Trooper. Uh, three, three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Discard a creature card. It gets plus 2 and, and trample. It can only activate it once per turn. So it's a creature card. 
and a once per turn activation, so definitely not as strong as some of the other cards that exist in the past, but a 4-4 beater is also not too bad. This could this could definitely be in the deck if we absolutely need to play it. Uh, we have the Generous Stray, a 1-2 whenever it enters the battlefield draw a card. Uh, Elvish Visionary with a little bit higher cost, that's fine. A 2-1 Lifelinker of Child Knight, we've seen this many times in certain uh, limited formats, it's much better. Others, it's pretty meh. These type of cards are, you end up pe being very good and limited too. The, uh, usually this on a rat, but a 1-1 Death Touch over 1 mana, nothing wrong with that. Prey Upon, it already works with Death Touch stuff. So we have three ways already, uh, either one way to give Death Touch or two Death Touchers outright. Or, and then we have another, like, the 4-1 has a pretty good body. Uh, flying, I don't know how good Flying is going to be in this format, but a 1-4 Reach is very reasonable. If, no, if nothing else, it's going to be a very good sideboard card to go towards. And when it, uh, the rat enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card, so Ravenous Rats. These are typically very good. And especially when you have the synergy with, like, you can utilize your creatures to discard to, to get value back. And a dead weight. Really good there with a the Golgari Guildgate. Deadweight is a very premier removal. Solid A plus uh, pack here from the, um, yeah. So I'm not gonna show you my arena code because I'll probably end up, uh, the back of this has an arena code and I think you can, one per account is all you can uh, redeem. So I'm gonna use that for myself. I will be giving out tons of arena codes though. Don't you worry. Alrighty, so let's go into the first pack now. We're seven minutes into this. So I'm gonna have a lot of people already upset about the long time of this video. So we have the Wishcoin Crab, the Shore Strike, Pax Favor. Uh, Pax Favor gets plus three plus three to a creature with Convoke. Not a bad card. Like I'm not really showing you the, the off-colored ones because these typically you're, you're kind of stuck, maybe splashing a color, but you're kind of stuck with your seated pack. You're gonna have more cards uh, of and this pack was absolutely good. So I doubt that we're gonna be going to any other color a 2-2 pumpable card This is is right on curve where it wants to be another prey upon very good card for this deck with death touchers uh, gra uh, Graphitic punch so target creature control deals damage uh, de Target creature you control deals damage equal to his power target player We would consider splashing this if it said to target uh, creature or player uh, but unfortunately, this is like something that uh, more of a gruel ability. It's funny that's an is it ability, but it's like gruel is usually the one. I'm, I'm sure there's some combos with the defender that can get huge, uh, but it's 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 something you want big beefy creatures to be able to use that ability. So it's a fling type ability, but for four mana sorcery speed. Uh, the Demir Locket can help us splash, or don't don't be too. Um, worried about using this in light Golgari because it still is a three mana rock they can add towards black. So if you have a higher curve where you need to ramp towards something, very good card to splash in. The Centaur uh, pacemake, uh, Peacemaker, it enters the battlefield, each player gains four life. Eh, of course, it might actually work in what we're going for go late game. Uh, Dark Blade Agent, two, three, as long as you've surveilled this turn, it has death touch. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to the player, you draw a card. Very good splashable card if we need to go into Soul Tie. Uh, Devious Cover Up is a four mana counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, X out instead, putting it into his owner's graveyard. He may shuffle up to four cards from your graveyard in your library. Sure. Uh, pretty unreasonable counter spell limited though. The Chemist Insight that has jump start to draw two cards. Very good card. I think this card will definitely see standard play. Uh, Inspiring Unicorn. When it attacks creatures, you control it plus one plus one. However, the problem with Inspiring Unicorn is it's double white. That's going to be very tough to splash. Uh, we have the Thought Erasure. Target opponent re reveals their hand. You choose an online card from it. That player discards that card. And the Surveil 1. Uh, very hard to splash because you will be wanting to use this early. The blue and the black is pretty tough. We have a Pelt Collector. Whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, uh, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector, you put a plus one stone counter. It has three or more against Trample. Very good one, drop and sealed. And awesome, we get another Golgari Guildgate, which is basically going to solidify that we are in the Golgari uh, faction, guild, whatever you want to call it. Pack number two, sort of pack number three. We have a take heart plus two plus two and you gain one life for each attacking creature uh radical ideas jump start draw a card i actually like this card in popper a lot i don't know it, it still feels still better than think twice of course think twice is just strictly better i would say but not a bad card uh we have an under undergrowth so this works with our mechanics when when it when mood a uh, mood mark painter enters the battlefield target creature gains menace and gets plus x plus zero x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard awesome not bad at all uh we have another one four Oh, with Reach, so great cyber options. Another terrible, devious uh, cover-up. We have the Riz Home, 
uh, Lurcher, or Rhizome Lurcher, I am probably murdered that name, enters the battlefield with a, a number of plus ones counters, equal number of creature cards in your graveyard. Very, very good with a lot of these death touch that we want to use to get in the, in the graveyard. The Sky Knight Legionnaire, great card for Golgar, or for Boros. Uh, Darkblade Agent's another one. This is going to really want me to splash. So, um, the Surveil part might not be that great, but uh, if we can get enough like uh, Surveil cards we can splash in, it will... I mean, they. what I like about Demir and I like about Golgari is they work off each other very well. And this is one of the cards I like a lot. Another Centaur, Peacemaker, a Whisper Agent. This is another great card that like a lot of people misunderstand that they have to be in Demir. This is just a one, a black, and a black for my deck. Whenever it's the edge of the battlefield, Surveil. So it's going to actually work Flash, too. Really powerful. The Flower into Flourish. Now, we can use this side no matter what. If we splash, we can definitely use this side. So this side says, Search Library for a Forest or Plains and Punish Your Hand. The Flourish, so it helps me fix. And the Flourish says creatures you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So, very good card. Uh, grid, of, grid for battle, put a plus one counter on each of up to two dark creatures for one mana. Uh, the Golgari Fine Broker, woohoo! Well, this is a very good Golgari card as well. A 3-4 win enters the battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. 3-4. So, it's, it's almost uh, like the... Uh, why can't I think of the card that's still played in Commander? The just one, two, two, two green and one. Oh, we return anything. This is only permanence. Still very reasonable. And we have a Thief of Sanity is a rare. Flying when it, when it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one of them face down, then puts the rest into their graveyard. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may, that's a very, and you may spend any mana of any color to cast it. Very, we are really going to be pushed into Soul Tie, I think. Unfortunately, we get the Is It Guildgate. It's not going to work for our strategy, but solid Demir cards in that pack. We have the Demir Clue Stone as well as a Golgari one, so fixing should be a breeze. Uh, we have two Golgari Guild Gates. All right, let's hope for some some other stuff here. We have the Rust, a Rubble Belt Boar, a three three, and just battlefield a target creature gets plus two plus zero. These are really good aggressive cards. A color, color the culprit, uh, destroy target creature's toughness four or greater. A uh, very good splashable card. We somehow go into Celestia, but that at this point is going to seem very few and far between. Another Child of Night is is good. A three two Vigilance is fine for three mana. Uh, Maniacal Rage I uh, guess plus two plus two and can't block for two mana. Uh, Hired Poisoner another Death Toucher. So we're up to to four Death Touchers. A Vigilance which is great splashing here. Two two Vigilance and we can easily use it for one in a green. Hypothesis five mana to so draw a card. Then you may ha discard another card when you do it deals four damage. Two target creature, um, great card, card, probably can't splash. Another premier removal spell with our Death Touchers. Hammer Dropper, 5-2 Mentor, not bad. Great Mentor Enabler. Uh, the Crawl Harpooner, this is uh, another really good card. When there's a battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control. It gets plus X zero where X number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you may have it fight that creature. Uh, I wish this had, of course, Flash would have put it over the top. Would have made, made it too good. Uh, but the Reach is awesome for a 3-2. Doesn't have Defender. Uh, and if some way you, you can give this haste, that's actually a very good card. So I'm thinking about like going back to a Gruul Speedy Gonzalez type build in the future. Like if we get any cool Gruul haste cards, like Samut rotated, Bloodless Insider rotated, a few other ways to give things haste. This is a very reasonable haste creature. Uh, it's fine when it comes out, but if you can give it the haste, that's huge. We have the Legion Guild Mage, uh, tap a creature for three mana, three damage to each opponent for six mana, but at least it's a two two. Inescapable Blaze that can't be countered, six damage to any target. Uh, the, the venerated Loxodons are rare, so this is like a card that's really good in token-based decks. Uh, it's very splashable, very splashable. And the thing is, like, we could even cast it off of this, the safe hide, uh, the, uh, where the safe hide, the two mana card that we got earlier, where you can, uh... Or no, it's a two mana vigilance where it costs one and a it, it's a white green card. So the con convoke can actually be able to reduce the color cost of it. But I I don't think this Celestia is going to quite get there, even though it's a powerful card. And then boom, we have the Demir Gilgate, which is making me think that yeah, it's we're probably in the in in the Soul Tie. We have three Gilgates in Soul Tie, two of the the Mana Rocks in Soul Tie, and we have a ton of really good Demir payoff cards. So unfortunately, that rare is not going to work for us. The rest of the cards, though, will. Uh, here's one a nice little Surveil card. The Unexplained Disappearance. Two mana, return to our creature to its owner's hand. And Surveil 1. The uh, Cosmotronic Wave. Cosmotronic deal, deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control. Creatures your opponent's control can't block this turn. The uh, Wary Okapi, or Okapi, Okapi. Vigilance 3-2 again, we've seen this. 
Uh, another Devious cover-up. Geez, they want us to play that card. The Another Trooper. I mean, it's a good filler card for sure. Another Sky Knight Legionnaire. Another Whisper Ra Agent. Awesome. The Candlelight Vigil. Plus three to in Vigilance for four mana. Sonic Assault. Target creature deals... Or tar tap target creature deals two damage to that creature's controller. Jumpstart. I love this card for Is It. When Draft comes around, I don't think that Is It's very good in Sealed, but in Draft, I think it's exceptional. Uh, True Fire Captain. Four mana for a 4-3 Mentor. If True Fire Captain is dealt damage, deals that much damage to target player. So kind of like the Boros Reckoner reprint here. A little bit harder to cast, though. Does have Mentor on it. A Night Veil Sprite. Love this card. I think at this point, we're almost like going into more Demir Splash Golgari, because uh, some of our blue cards are really, really powerful. Another status statue, very good card. And look, our rare is on theme with the er, uh, et, Etrata, the silencer. Four mana for a three five, can't be blocked when it deals combat damage to player. Exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exile cards with hit counters on them. <laughs> bomb. This card is a bomb. And you exile it. Deals combat damage player. Exile target creature that player controls. So it's exiled, and then it gets a hit counter on it. So it's gone. Yeah, it's removal. And then if you remove three creatures with... with, Wow. This card's a bomb in limited. And we have the Conclave Tribunal as a foil. Pretty card, but... Uh, enters the battlefield. Exile target not only permanent opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Oh, makes you really want to splash for this, but I don't think it's going to get there. Another is at Guildgate. Yeah, who knows? We could somehow go into uh, Grixis rather than Soul Tide, but I highly, highly doubt that. Uh, I don't think there's enough payoffs to really go into it. And the Guild Gates are, are the exact same at this point to Golgari, uh, to Izzets. Another Radical Ideal, sure. Very good filler card. The Goblin Locksmith, when it attacks a uh, creature with Defender, can't block. Locks on Restore, Convoke, enters Battlefield, gain for life. The Another Recluse, Flying's going to have a tough time with our deck for sure. The Dowser of Lights, a 4-5 filler for 5 mana. A Gateway Plaza, another Fixer, this is absolutely fine. Uh, counts as a gate, uh, not relevant in our card pool so far. Electromancer, Siege Worm, going to be a nice little finisher for us. A Boros Locket, unfortunately not enough. I don't know how many lockets I'd want to run though. Two is probably the right number. Uh, the big undergrowth card. This creature, this spell costs one less for each creature card in your graveyard. Winners of the battlefield return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Don't know if this is going to be enough in our deck to really... 6-6 uh, six, six with no abilities. It might get reduced by 3 or 4 by the time you want to cast it. So we're looking at 5 mana or possibly 4 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. You know what? That's probably actually is reasonable. Oh, uh, another Conclave Tribunal. Really want to splash into white because those are premier removal spells for sure. Uh, however... I think the 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 Demir payoff is going to be much better. We do have that little man, uh, one mana spell to go get a Plains Aura for us that we can do with a green. So possibly we could go four color good stuff, but I highly highly doubt that. Selective Snare return X star creature snare of the of the creature type of your choice that on his hand. Ooh, this is easy, easily a cyborg card, possibly even even better than a cyborg card. And we do get a mythic here with the Thousand Year Storm. Uh, whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, copy for each other instant or sorcery spell. If cast this turn, you may choose new new, new copies. This is kind of an awkward card in sealed, in limited, uh, because by the time you actually cast this, your hand might be very low to begin with. Uh, so you'd have to have a deck that could really pay it off. Uh, same thing even in standard. And another Candlelight Vigil as the foil and a Boros Gilgate. So tomorrow, I think this is how I'm going to do it. So I think I'm going to publish it today. And tomorrow, we'll have my special guest friend, Travis, come in with his app. And we're going to analyze this card pool and try to figure out the best way to build this deck. And then we'll play it in the pre-release and see how well it goes. And uh, yeah, that's... I like this card pool. Let's just kind of go over the highlights. White has some cool highlights here with the Conclave Tribunals times two. It also has a few Convoke cards that are very, very uh, reasonable. Uh, but Golgari is just, Golgari Demir is just really, uh, really jam-packed, full of support and like a lot of removal. Uh, the only problem I, I'm looking at with Demir, with Golgari, I think Demir is where our finishers are. Golgari unfortunately has a lot of removal, but doesn't really have a lot of payoffs. And that I think is going to really push me into Soul Tie. Um, the Thief of Sanity, uh, the Etrata. Uh, we have Deadweight Assassin's Trophy, very, very good card pool. So we'll see what we'll see. What, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pack this up, and then we will lay it out and see what deck I can come up with. And yeah, we'll give it a go. I hope you enjoyed this pre-release box opening. This has been Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder, and check back tomorrow. Thanks for watching.